Uh, bonjour, I'm Gijin Dijnikas, Makwat Nodem, Wasak Singh Don Jaba. Hello, my name is Wabgijik Rice. I'm an author and a journalist, originally from Wasaksing First Nation. I'm of Nishnabe and Canadian descent, and I currently live in Sudbury, Ontario, with my wife and our three sons. Uh, weather and climate play pretty big roles in my two most recent novels, Moon of the Crested Snow and Moon of the Turning Leaves. The first book, Moon of the Crested Snow, takes place just as fall is turning into winter. And what happens is this mysterious blackout befalls this community up in Northern Ontario, and they discover soon after that it's this widespread uh, apocalyptic event. On top of that, the weather changes really quickly. This blizzard blows in um, rather unexpectedly, and this community finds that they've been unable to track and predict the weather as well as they used to because of climate change, right? So this huge storm happens on top of this blackout and this community has to figure out how to survive in the midst of all this. So there was this, you know, looming sense of winter dread that hung over me as I was writing the story. Um, I have a lot of respect for the winter season. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I recognize uh, the threat within it, right? And how important it is to really prepare for the winter. And that's one of the key messages in Moon of the Crested Snow. In Moon of the Turning Leaves, it takes place mostly throughout the summer. So it's the same community, uh, about 12 years after this blackout happened, the impacts of climate change still linger. So there's an increase in forest fires, there's an increase in flooding, and that impacts how they're able to traverse the land, how they're able to hunt and gather food and medicine from the bush and so on, right? So this community decides that they need to go on this quest and the weather plays a role throughout, you know? They have to contend with the elements as they're going on this uh, hopefully life-saving quest to their original homeland. So the weather was something I was always thinking about as I was writing these stories and it's something that I consider on a day-to-day -day basis, right? It's uh, a beautiful reality that we all inhabit as humans in this you know volatile world of different kinds of weather and, and I think it's something that should be respected for sure. When I first started on camera at the Weather Network as a reporter, I was really encouraged by the news manager at the time to do stories about the Indigenous communities in and around Toronto. And that was really empowering for me as a young Indigenous journalist to know that Indigenous stories were valued and there was a keen interest in them. Uh, I can think of some stories we did, for example, about planning a powwow around the weather or using the weather to teach words in uh, the Anishinaabe language and so on. So I was like 23, 24 when this was happening, right at the start of my broadcasting career. And it really, I think, solidified my desire to want to tell Indigenous stories in mainstream media. Because, you know, there's this idea that I grew up with that, you know, mainstream media doesn't serve me as an Indigenous person. But I think when you have someone who's inclusive and is dedicated to telling every story within a community, that goes a long way for the journalists themselves, right? And for me, that really helped set my path as an Indigenous journalist, telling stories by Indigenous people in a mainstream setting. So I always give the Weather Network credit for starting me off on that foot. And it was never like a debate or a challenge for me to advocate for these stories. It was always like, okay, I'd pitch it. And then they'd say, yeah, go ahead and do it, which was really cool. So I'm, I'm very grateful for the Weather Network for starting my career that way. The winter solstice is a really key time for a lot of Indigenous peoples. In Anishinaabe culture, in my culture, uh, we see it as a time of big change. The winter solstice is the shortest day of the year and the longest night of the year, and it leads us into the winter season. Traditionally, Anishinaabek have seen the winter as the storytelling season. So it's when things calm down, uh, there's not as much to be gathered or prepared out in the bush or on the land. We're with our families, in our dwellings, and we're passing the time with our kids by telling stories. So the winter solstice really marks that season of storytelling to come. 
And it's something that I think is really valued amongst a lot of communities because it does reflect that time of togetherness and that opportunity to share stories and culture and so on. So in, in a lot of indigenous communities, I think the winter solstice is something that's marked in the same way as Christmas maybe, or the new year, or a, another one of those seasonal sort of dates on the calendar, right? So it just means, you know, we're gonna get together, we're gonna hunker down for the winter and share some stories, eat some good food, and hopefully celebrate who we are as indigenous people.